Good evening, I'm Kyle Clark. And I'm Kim Christensen. Weeks after an attempted kidnapping at Black Forest Elementary School in Aurora, we're getting a look at what happened. Nine News reporter Lauren Scafidi is along now to break down this video. Lauren? I've talked to parents who've been upset with the way the school initially handled the incident and what they call a lack of accountability after what happened on April 19th. A group of fifth grade boys is playing outside during recess on the left of your screen. The suspect enters frame on the right, circled in white. That's when you see the kids run back toward the school. Police say the suspect tried to grab a child, then tripped over the white blanket he was carrying. The suspect appears to get up and walk away. About 40 seconds into the video the school provided, we see a teacher's assistant. The school says that TA was yelling at the suspect to get off the field. After about a minute, a second TA walks into frame as the first TA walks away from the suspect. So no one from the school ever called a secure perimeter. The principal admits that was a clear mistake and that the school should have brought everyone inside. The suspect, a registered sex offender, was arrested at a nearby Walgreens. He was charged with kidnapping and child abuse. The video is upsetting, Lauren. We have also like, heard from the suspect's family about a week ago. Yeah, so the suspect's family tells us that he's battling schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. He ran away when he was a teenager, and for years, they didn't know where he was unless he was in custody. Live in the studio, Lawrence Cafiti, 9 News. A police chase that started in Thornton this morning ended in Lakewood with Thornton officers shooting and killing two people. Thornton PD says it all started when the officers were monitoring a suspicious car near East 84th and Washington. Just before 3 this morning, officers followed the car to a parked lot near Alameda and Sheridan in Lakewood, and that's when police say a passenger shot at them. That started the chase, which ended at 2nd and Garrison, a couple of miles away. That's where two people got out. Police say one had a gun and officers opened fire. The three officers involved have been placed on administrative leave. That's standard protocol. We learned today Denver police are planning to fire an officer for body slamming a man to the ground. We have video showing the attack and a warning. It is hard to watch. It happened the night the Nuggets won the NBA Finals and the city's halo camera system captured people in the streets. Elijah Smith says he ran toward a fight outside of a bar and punched a man. That's when Denver police officer Adam Glasby body slammed Smith, knocking him out. But... As soon as I took two steps back, I just feel my body being lifted in the air. And then that was it. And I felt the pain. Smith says he suffered injuries to his back, including neurological damage. On Monday, Officer Glaspie pleaded guilty to misdemeanor assault. As part of a plea deal, prosecutors dropped a felony charge. The fall of District Attorney Linda Stanley is taking cases down with it. The elected DA in Central Colorado has been taken off of the Suzanne Morphew murder, the Suzanne Morphew murder case for alleged misconduct, and now one of the DA's child abuse cases is being thrown out because of how she's behaved. A judge dismissed child abuse charges against the mother from Canyon City because of comments DA Stanley made to local media. Stanley's office was prosecuting felony charges against a couple, a man who's charged with killing a 10-month-old and the infant's mother charged with child abuse for leaving her son in his care. Before those cases went to trial, Stanley said this to our partners at KRDO in the Springs. He has zero investment in this child, zero. He's watching that baby so he can get laid, that's it. Without the caring factor, without the love factor, then it's the baby's a pain in the Defense attorneys for the mother said those comments violated the mother's right to a fair trial. A judge agreed to drop the charges, calling Stanley's comments, quote, shocking to the universal sense of justice. Stanley has an opportunity to appeal. It was a gorgeous last day of April as we look ahead to even warmer days in the month of May. And not only does a new month begin tomorrow, we are also officially one week out from this year's first sunset after 8 p.m. Yes, <laughs> give it. To us. I know. Right, yes. <laughs> Could summer be far away? I mean, it's just starting to look no. and feel like it. I know. It's great. We have some summer-like thunderstorms coming in. We'll have some showers, a little bit of thunder and lightning, and temperatures are then going to really warm up as a big ridge of high pressure sets in for most of next week. We have a beautiful spring evening tonight, calm and quiet, but the next system already moving into northern Colorado, and that means cooler weather with a chance for showers as early as 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Temperature 
temperatures are still really comfortable. We're 905 and it's 55 degrees in Denver, 67 in Lamar, and temperatures in the mid 50s for Fort Collins and Greeley. Wind was really an issue for northern Colorado today. Very gusty and finally starting to let up just a little bit with the arrival of that front just to the north of us. But the winds in Boulder, Erie, Longmont, 30, 40 miles per hour today. We're seeing a little bit of high and mid-layer cloud cover ahead of the system, but the showers will be slow to get here. They will move in tomorrow afternoon. The severe weather threat tonight is low. Tomorrow gets a little bit closer to eastern Colorado. We'll talk about that coming up in weather in just a bit. City leaders in Loveland say the city's projected to lose more than $11 million in revenue this year because voters decided to get rid of the grocery sales tax. Nine News reporter Rhea Shaw is live in Loveland where city council members are trying to figure out what happens next. Rhea. The meeting started late this evening and the agenda item addressing those budget cuts and shortfalls actually just started within the last 10 minutes here. And what took this long was the public comment. People are speaking up about these budget cuts and why they're being made. So the budget, the budget cuts include a long term budget cut for 2025, but also one time budget reductions this year as a temporary solution like canceling bigger, bigger projects, upgrades and maintenance from public works and parks and recreation. That would include the new sprinklers the library was supposed to get, the North Lake tennis courts renovation and the Centennial Park ball fields plaza upgrades. Community members questioned why budget cuts are being made in these areas. Please do not go after the library. Find other ways to make this work and find ways that we can bounce back from it. There are ways of managing a budget and I know you all manage budgets and I know you can do this. Loveland CFO told me the city's loss in revenue from January and February alone was more than $1.6 million. He says that's comparable to recessions like 2008 or the pandemic, but it may be even worse because this is different than uh, COVID or Great Recession or even a natural disaster because in those instances, you expect the revenue stream to return to normal. In this case, this is a permanent revenue change. So this is a permanent recession. Voters eliminated this grocery sales tax back in November with 65% of the vote. And if that means, you know, if you spend $10,000 in a year at the supermarket, you will be saving $300 per year or $25 per month. We are keeping an eye on this meeting tonight and we'll keep you updated as the meeting progresses. Reporting live in Loveland, Rhea Cha, 9 News. Thanks, Rhea. Major milestone today for people living in the Monta Vista Mobile Home Park in Denver's Westwood neighborhood. Today, that park was officially sold to the nonprofit Sharing Connection. They plan to own the park for one to three years until mobile home park residents are able to operate the park on their own. It's a big step forward in a process that started nearly two years ago, so people living there can eventually own the land that they live on. Tonight, the stalemate is ongoing on the Auraria campus between leaders there and pro-Palestinian protesters who have camped out on the quad. Campus leaders there say that they met with student leaders again, reiterating that some of their demands are outside the authority of college higher-ups. The protesters have said they will not leave until their demands are met. Chief among them, that CU should cut financial ties and other connections with Israel. Last Friday, police and Mayor Mike Johnston gave them an ultimatum to leave, but they did not follow through. The protests have been growing across the country, including in New York City, where tonight it, things have really started to happen. Police in Col and Col have gone into Columbia University and arrested dozens of pro-Palestinian protesters from the campus. Demonstrators occupied Cam Hamilton Hall earlier today after setting up an encampment earlier in the month. Police at the University of South Florida also broke up a pro-Palestinian protest this afternoon after police say they observed protesters threatening to use things they would bought as weapons. University police eventually ordered protesters to leave the area. After a few minutes, they used what appears to be tear gas to disperse the crowd. And on the campus of the University of Texas, Austin officials say they found five-gallon buckets filled with 
chunks of concrete over the past weekend, over the past week rather, amid protests at the school. The university says similar buckets were with rocks were used to assault police officers during past protests. A school spokesperson says 79 people were arrested at the campus yesterday, including 45 people who were not affiliated with the university.